We love horror movies from the 70s and 80s And we watch them for two days straight And then we go write a book Now we're looking back at every title One at a time in this podcast that we put out monthly Once we've had an episode for every movie It's time to meet up for another shock marathon the red record button is red, and welcome to a new phase. <laughs> <laughs> Under protest. Of this Shock Marathons podcast. Uh, I'm Matt Farley here with Ava Scalzo. Hi. Tom Scalzo. Hello. Charlie Roxburgh. Greetings. And for the first and uh, potentially last time, we're, we're jumping outside of the genre of uh, horror movies to cover... A romance. It's not even a romantic comedy, I decided. It's really just <laughs> it's just a straight romance. I mean, yes, there's some comedic flourishes, but um it's Yeah, that's true. Just a romance. That's, that's, that's I think a good, that's accurate. That's a good point. Yeah, it's, not, it's probably not wacky enough. Not to focus, yeah. It's yeah. it's outrageously uh, mundane. But I will argue um that it had I mean in terms of tone and just the feeling that you get uh, when watching it, it shares um, the same je ne sais quoi as many of the, the horror movies that we've watched over the years. That mm, I have a point to that, too, but I'm going to wait. <clears throat> All right, so let's get to work. Those of us in the world of dating are warriors competing on an often brutal battlefield. So says Donovan, the voice of... Over in the voiceover as she meets a guy for a date. Ah, oh, poor Donovan. Uh, he's more interested in the game than he is in having dinner with her. Uh, she gets the Asian salad. He gets a bloody steak. Uh, he keeps watching the game on his phone because the TV's behind him. She asks uh, what he likes to do when he's not coaching or watching football. He tells her that he does have an interest that is actually creative, and we cut to seeing him singing karaoke uh, uh, ooh, ooh. Brutal. hurts so good at this point huh that, yeah. that <laughs> opening sequence was excruciating yeah it is yeah you're right it's both it was turn to 11 <laughs> yeah i mean not only is he a jerk with the football it's like they had to get a dig in against him with his order for food too oh yeah any chance they get um and yeah when you, when you start getting into the movie you realize that the opening was completely irrelevant. Like they could have could have just not started there, and you would not have lost anything. They should have not started there. Yes, Charlie. It's Valentine esque <laughs> with the date scene. They yeah. had speed dating, but that's right? True. That's yeah, true. and even the look of the um, just the picture, just the, the the glossiness, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Um. Anyway, what? Oh. What a movie. Uh, so then uh, then he's singing, and uh, it seems clear that um, this other girl at the place um, is into him. And and, and, um, and so Donovan seems to kind of, like, uh, set the two up. And, um, and, the, and the voiceover says, and so the search continues. And, oh, the, just the, oh, that, like, that knowing wink at the camera... At this, which at this point is just figurative, <laughs> 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 but th that you know that kind of like, oh, we're all in this together, aren't we, ladies? Like uh, attitude in her voice just makes me just so angry. Like, oh, Donovan, shut up. Anyway, she goes home and looks at, at the photo of the guy that she broke up with a year ago. That's uh, that would be Patrick. Uh, Next morning, she gets up early to talk <laughs> to talk to her sister. Is it Becky or Becca or both? I think it's Becky. Becky. But I want to just say something about the time she wakes up at. Okay. Who set their alarm for four fifty nine? Mm. Mm. Because if most alarm clocks, you have to press the minute thing for like. You have to press it 59 times to get to number 59. So most people, most normal people, will set their alarm for 5 o'clock, the zero zero, because you, you only have to change the hour. You don't have to change the minute. That's a good point. That's, that's not Donovan, though. 
She goes the extra mile. <laughs> she goes the, I mean, oh, that like... she does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what is the what is the situation here? Uh, Becky lives with Donovan um, on her couch just permanently. I guess it's. So- I don't know. I mean, she could have just fallen asleep waiting up for her that night. I, I think feel she like was, she's always she's on the couch, allegedly watching some sort of movie marathon. Okay, it, I guess, and that's why she was asleep on the couch. I guess she's but just there a lot. It's very unclear to me whether or not. Because at other moments, it seems like she lives with her boyfriend. Oh, they definitely don't live together. That's unchaste. So it's uh, that that would not happen. Not in the world. <laughs> not in this small town. Not in this. <laughs> not in this possibly faith-based funded film. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Okay. She gets up early, talks to uh, Becky, who's on the couch. Uh, what was she supposed to do? Uh, her boyfriend was offered a job in Chicago. Would she follow him? And the answer is no. She can't leave this town. She loves this town. Let's listen to her discuss the dilemma a little bit more on the voiceover. In my life, leave everything I've ever known and the town that I love and go to Chicago, a thousand miles away. Or watch all of my plans drive away in a U-Haul. I hear he's enjoying the deep dish pizza. <laughs> oh, the, the music just, just oh, the flourish. Oh, oh. It's, it, but it's so much of that. It's like, it's like the same emotion hit over and over and over. <laughs> just, oh, just so, just like blunt force. Oh, and yeah. so trapped in time too, kind of right. This could it that that intro could have been from the ninety a nineties show or a nineties movie. It could have been from a two thousands movie. Yeah, I yeah. Hear, I hear he's enjoying the deep dish pizza. Oh, she Donovan, does. shut up! <laughs> also, like she she could have actually told us the real reason she couldn't leave, which is the fact that she is a small business owner, has a charity that she right. Like she actually has quite a bit going on in her life, and yet, yeah, she just chooses to say, "Oh, I love this town." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Point. All right. She works. She could be honest with us. <laughs> she works her way through town on foot uh, to to the coffee shop, passing. I like that. I like that. The, the on foot thing is great and things. and and believe. I do like believe, that. Very not believable. If I know <laughs> Donovan, she does not. She does not walk places. You know. I don't know. Um, she passes a guy who gives her some newspapers. She reports to him that she'll have his favorite roast ready for him at 10 a.m. Uh. <laughs> it's like a cartoon, the whole thing, pretty much. <laughs> how, how like, clean and, and Naplu ultra local this is, right? It's, it's, all those words went through my head while I was watching it. All right. Meanwhile, in the big city... I guess they name. I wish it was just the big city, but they do declare it's New York at a few points. Um, yeah. A playwright, <laughs> a playwright. Named- you know what? <laughs> you know what I wanted to happen here when the playwright is, is talking to the guy. I wanted an, one of the nearby tables to say like, "I enjoy being in New York City. <laughs> you, this city that we are in, New York, is quite good. They're they're selling it hard. Yeah." So Sorry, they're, didn't no, 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 they're discussing um, the recent lack of success that, that he's had. Um, so it's Ben, the writer. The agent knows that Ben will find a way to recapture his old playwriting magic. He's just he's just got to do it. Um, how, what's what's more fun than 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 seeing an occupation, especially writing? Uh, the way that writing is portrayed in movies is. Uh, is pain oftentimes painful, but rarely more painful than this, huh, Charlie? Yeah, it's it's simplified and cartoony. It's good for this movie. It's painful, yeah, but this is, it's a good pain. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of pain. There's a that's a lot of pain. <laughs> I think he was actually. What's weird about the the it's like it's actually his producer and not his, even though he actually behaves like his agent. Oh, okay. Good the catch. official title, Kevin Sorbo's official title, and we should we should mention again that this is TV's Hercules official title. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I did not even realize that. So, so TV's Hercules is Ben's <laughs> producer. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Inter- that, that's a good point. Good catch there. I didn't. Know. It enhances the whole thing when you know that. Yeah. All right. Let's now uh, back to the small town that that thankfully is never named. Um, let's it is let, named. It is named. What? <laughs> it's Fairhope. Fair Ho- we just don't know what state it actually takes place in. W- who says it's Fairhope? When does that? Ha- how did I miss it's that? A shot of a sign. There are multiple okay. shots of that sign. Ooh, mm. See, this is why we need a whole team of people working on this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one ever says where state they're in. Now. Let's. I, it was filmed in Alabama, but yeah, well, I, it definitely has a Gulf Coast feel to it for sure. Yeah. So that's good but, to know. But like, I it seemed that seemed weird because the way that they then like make the distance from New York City to this town, it doesn't seem like a very great distance, but it's. Also, like, clearly a thousand miles from Chicago. So, mm-hmm. you know, we know it's on, it could be any one of the coasts, but we don't know which one. Yeah. I mean, this was, again, filmed in Alabama, so it's probably the Gulf Coast, but. It's, yeah, very vague. The geography, very, just everything's vague. That's the beauty of it. And, and, uh, I'm disappointed now to, to learn that they mentioned the name of the, uh, the town. Uh, <laughs> oh, even if it's a made up town, though? <clears throat> I, I I I'm just at least they never really say it. I just like that it's always ba- just vague town when they're mm-hmm. talking about it. At least. All right, now um, let's listen to Max show up on his wheelchair at the coffee shop. Good morning, Max. Good morning, sunshine. How are you today? Grateful, lady. Grateful. I have got fresh air in my lungs. Good friends in my heart, and in a moment, I'm gonna have some great coffee in my belly. Yes. Okay, I've been experimenting on this blend all week, so let me know what you think. Got coffee in this blend? Three different types. And then it's good. Coffee is coffee. Don't overthink it. Caffeinating the world is a public service, Max. It's a serious responsibility. That being said, I want a medium, a triple caramel dream with a half pump coconut and a third of the caramel. Did he order a cup of coffee or a wedding cake? Nice <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. oh, That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> He's been going in every day, too. And this other guy probably goes in every day, too. Yeah. It's every, everything's for the benefit of the audience. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But that's a romantic comedy thing. I actually, if I hear, you know, there's, there's talk of lattes and, and two fancy coffees, and usually the characters are supposed to like order like a plain coffee. Mm-hmm. Right. It comes up in these kind of movies all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But in this case, yeah. <laughs> the that one little black dress, it usually if someone <laughs> mentions little black, black dress comes up all the time. Not in this one movie though. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's also a common trope in most romance novels too. Like what people like, your what you order for like what your coffee order is is like actually indicative of who you are as a character so like someone who orders a really fussy has a really fussy like coffee order then you know that implies that he's kind of a fussy person whereas like someone who just orders a black coffee is like no nonsense and you know straight shooter and <laughs> oh, yeah totally no. it's like one of those like weird shortcuts you know like yeah yeah, and they'll yeah. they like it in this movie. They love shortcuts like that. Um, yes, <laughs> Kevin is the guy who just ordered that complicated coffee. He's Ben's brother, Ben Ben no. the writer. No friend. Oh, friend, friend from college. college. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched this multiple times. I don't know what I was watching. All right. Uh, so Ben calls to report that opening night was a bomb. Ah, oh, he was even heckled by an eighty-year-old couple who wanted him out of the business. <laughs> that's that really hurts. Yeah, that's that's painful. Ben, that, they had good access to him too to like his <laughs> make such clear yeah, taunts. Where's the writer? Where's the writer? A, like that's a that's the other thing that's almost like so hard to believe because you know he's a stage like theater like screen like you know playwright. playwright yeah. You know so like. You know, you kind you don't usually know what the playwright looks like. You know, I know. Yes, unless you're like a very avid. 
it's this alternate reality like <laughs> where, where playwrights are just making so much money you you know it's <laughs> <laughs> all right um ben has also lost his girlfriend failure has a way of liberating you from superficiality he says kevin wants him to come visit ben says he'll think about it um now becca is going to show up followed by eli and just more just delightful discussion. Hey, Sarah, can I get one more pump of coconut? Thanks. <laughs> Doth my eyes deceive me? Or are you actually awake before 10? My sister? Impossible. <laughs> Rough night, Becky? You have no idea. Daniel Steele, all night movie. Ma- okay, wait, that was like like the room-esque right there, how much information oh, they just crammed That's why in my it. hand was raised. Well, how much information is crammed and how many people are walking in, like, <laughs> yes. new character, new character, new character, new character, new character. <laughs> More and, talk about Pump of Coconut. And she's like, not my sister, you know, too, which is great. Let's hear more of this. Um, enough said. More cheesy romance movies? You do know you have Kevin. Yeah, babe, I am your cheesy romance. Yes, but you've never rescued me from a covered wagon floating down a rushing river. Mm, I was unaware that was required of me. Oh, excuse me. You so did that on purpose. Mm, Yes, yes, I did. See, that was your perfect opportunity to defend my honor. The master is here. The master is late. Not to mention loud and obnoxious. Master, really? I believe you lost the Brewster War yet again. Don't worry about it, Eli. No one's beating her. Espresso just bends to her will. Well, it is an art form, but you can keep practicing. Uh, Well, I'm getting faster, and she's getting nervous. (laughs) Here comes Eli, super barista, here to save the world one latte at a time. Don't you have a job to go to or something? That's one of the many benefits of being an executive resale specialist. (laughs) Flexible hours. Executive what? You sell old junk on eBay. Vintage collectibles. It's a difference. Hey, easy, Tiger. Save some for the paying customers, please. You do realize metabolism is a gift, right? An unfair gift. What is this, like, pick on Becky morning? Yeah, stop hassling my girl. Mm. How was that? My night. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> wow. What a what a lesson in dialogue that was, huh? <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to nitpick that <clears throat> Daniel Steele doesn't actually write historical romance novels. Uh, she writes contemporary. Uh, I mean, she has a couple that are somewhat historical, but they they, they don't usually date back to the frontier era. They're they're generally mm. like nineteen twenties, like late Victorian, early twentieth mm. century stuff. That's huge. Um, so Get clearly, up. they were just you know, making assumptions about romance novels and didn't, hadn't actually read any, which Probably not. I find annoying. Well, that's, that's like, <laughs> you, you mentioned The Room, you know, uh, somebody did, I think. It, ha- it definitely has that feel that it, it's, like, created by someone who, like, has gleaned their entire knowledge of film by watching, like, one after-school special kind of thing. And, like, I got this. I know how to do this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it totally feels like that. I know. Yeah. And it hurts, but it's, it's, I don't, and, and I don't know. Um, yeah, it just something about it. Just, it, it just, a bell rang in my head when I watched this. I was like, this is, this is everything we like about horror movies. You know, <laughs> and we don't even have to deal with the violence. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, it's just, there's, there, there is so much conversation and it's, and it's also like, forced inside jokes oh that, yeah that yeah don't work like it's like <laughs> this whole bit this eli character like i did it did not it wasn't funny it did not like it was just like i don't i don't understand what the purpose of that was no, no yeah they're like barista it was war like another character to waste time with i hate the barista war so much and I'm not even, I'm not even, it's like, oh. I don't know the rules of this thing, even though that they have one by, at the end, I'm like, like, what is this, I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Anyway, so Donovan's assistant is Sarah, um, Donovan finally complains about last night's date to Sarah and Becky. Becky says the reason she's come by is to let her know that Donovan has a message on the computer. <laughs> oh, that that's 90s right there. I oh, love my that. goodness. You have a message on the computer. 
<laughs> she has a cell phone too. Yeah. Like, it's... Later she has a phone. Like what? Wait, let me go boot up my old PC and see if I can check out this message. Yeah. Oh wait, a I have this phone in my pocket. And what? Like what? Becky Which just she later actually does look at the message on. It makes no sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's from Donovan's ex, Patrick. He says he needs to see her. Uh, I, by the way, I hate Becky so much. Oh, she is. She is. Yeah. She is the worst. Oh, she is so bad. Uh, Becky and Kevin walk to the car discussing um, uh, uh, how Becca wants Donovan to have a chance at happiness. <laughs> she wants Kevin to help her. Donovan just needs a little guidance, that's all. Uh, and that feels very religious uh, right there, didn't it? I don't I, think I of didn't it at get the, the time, I didn't get a but... very religious vibe from this movie, so. You didn't? Oh, I got a huge religious vibe. <laughs> um, yeah. At the end of the night, uh, Donovan closes up the shop and sits down <laughs> to play the piano a bit. Which, <laughs> <laughs> which is a very nice touch. I like that. Meanwhile, Ben is considering moving out of the big city. It, it, I think it's going to happen. Next morning, we learn that Donovan has some money trouble. The bank may be foreclosing on her. Uh, Kevin sees that and offers help, which is refused. He's there to help. Uh, yes. Kevin says to her, Donovan, I'm a CPA. I can help. <laughs> <laughs> I love like, it. He practically li- is, lives with them. He's seeing them so much every day. Oh, I love being talked down to that much. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. And everything's for our benefit in a forced, oddly, an oddly fake manner. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, I just, it's so ridiculous that she refuses to even consider having him help her. Oh, yeah. She's the worst. Even as the situation worsens, she never thinks to herself, oh, I know a CPA. He happens to be dating my sister. Yeah. Maybe he'll help me out. Yeah, and um, or not only does she not think to do that, she doesn't think to do anything. She's just like, oh, poor me. My situation yeah. is so bad, and it, it's not fair that this has happened to me. She's not trying to do anything to fix it, though. Oh. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, the reason Kevin's in the shop is to find Becky's phone. So uh, Donovan dials it. Uh, where's the phone, Tom? Tell everyone, where's the phone? It's in the muffin uh, container on the phone. Oh, counter. that Becky in her eating. <laughs> That's like the me underwear scene from the room. <laughs> right there. Where, where, where's the underwear? Oh, in the couch. Becky's always eating. That's her thing. Oh, so Becky. Becky. It is She's so got some Becky. metabolism for it. It's a gift. <laughs> oh, it's, what a dumb character trait oh it makes me so mad great news folks john lovitz yes he is in this movie oh yes <laughs> this is when it picked up for tom <laughs> <laughs> he's an investment banker donovan learns a bit about him and determines what drink is best for him that's that's her superpower uh, he would he would never not have a drink already <laughs> He's like a newborn baby to the world of coffee and coffee shops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's listen as he explains his business philosophy and how it relates to her issue right here. Mr. Connor Sold? Mm-hmm. I'm sure he'll be in here to tell you himself. I know these small town guys get personally chummy with their borrowers, but you see, that's the problem. They base too many decisions on emotions and not enough on realities. But the bottom line is you're in too deep to get out. The economy has been tough the past few years. I know, it, it has been. And then you had that unfortunate timing where you had to replace the roof and update the plumbing at the same time. But you need to face the facts. You cannot afford to keep this place open. And I cannot afford not to force you out. Must be something that we can do. I think we both know we're just postponing the inevitable. Listen, I didn't come in here to close on you right now. Look, my business partner and I, we have some other stops to make. So uh, perhaps. Oh, right. Hmm. Now, I may not have the title yet, but that, sir, is an amazing shy. Thank you. 
What? Uh, perhaps we can meet again next week, and I could explain to you more about the uh, foreclosure process. Sure. Oh. It's on the house. Oh. Donovan, don't get, like, maybe if you stopped giving away coffee all the time, you wouldn't be going under, eh? Right. <clears throat> Just a thought. Yeah. Oh, that made me real mad. And don't give yeah. it to him. Yeah. Oh, so look. Uh, $500. Here's a, a, a heartbreaking misunderstanding outside of the coffee shop. Love it sees <laughs> Ben, who's just arrived in town, and he's just fawning over him. He's like, I know you. You're the famous playwright. <laughs> yeah, they're gods. They're gods in New York. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't walk down the street. You can't walk down the street. You're absolutely right. Uh, you know, Lovitz turns out is an amateur playwright, and he tells him, tells Ben about it. Donovan thinks that Ben is Lovitz's partner, and so she's extra rude to him, even saying, "You city types are all the same." Arrogant. Yeah. Um, before allowing Sarah to take over on the sale. So, um, in in typical romantic fashion, they they don't like each other to start. Um, yeah. But just quick before Ava goes, like what? What flipped in her brain that she was like giving Lovitz free coffees and she's like swearing at this guy just for existing? Yeah. Like what? What the heck? Why didn't she yell at Lovitz? I don't. Yeah, think yeah. She's like two different people there, thirty seconds yeah. apart. Also, he walks in. He's unshaven. He's wearing like <laughs> jeans and a hoodie. Like the least likely person to that you would ever peg as an investment banker and <laughs> somehow she's decided that because they had a conversation on the street yeah he is this evil unnamed partner and it's like it makes no sense that whole conversation she is literally behaving like a lunatic <laughs> like yeah i was like i do not understand what's wrong with ben that he is like intrigued by her <laughs> at all because she for the first like like their first like four encounters she is a total lunatic that's true yeah <laughs> yeah 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 there's nothing there's nothing to like about either one of them really um <laughs> so donovan calls becca while walking home to discuss her terrible day becca is pulled over on her scooter with Kevin. She explains that dodging squirrels on a scooter, not a good idea. <sighs> Ke oh, Kevin asks for a Phillips head screwdriver. She gives him a wrench. Oh, yeah. Gosh, she is so poor with her tool identification. Oh, that, that yeah. Becky, she's the worst. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Ben calls Kevin at the same time to say he's in town and that he was annoyed by an employee at the coffee shop. They all agree to dinner at Kevin's, but Ben and Donovan are not aware. Oh, mm -hmm. classic. Would you like to hear a great line? I love it when a plan comes together. Let's listen to that line. What are you so happy about? Who's that? That was my buddy Ben from college. I love it when a plan comes together. What? 18. Oh, God. So bad, huh, Charlie? Yeah, and now that you keep playing these clips, it's reminding me how how wall to wall the music is. I the know music. the music. <laughs> They're just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's totally relentless. All right, Eli talks with Ben at the coffee shop about how Donovan has a system in which she researches uh, the interests of the person that she's going on a date with. Um, just you know, typical banter between a barista and a um, and a customer, right? <laughs> um, but but Ben wonders aloud, what about her interests? So, yeah, whoo, big. Um, when Ben shows up for dinner, Becca is mad at Kevin for setting this up, but he convinces her that it's a good idea. Um, Donovan arrives. Yes, Tom. Did did you, did you notice that they both brought enormous loaves of bread? Oh yeah, interesting. Well, I, I, I noticed he did. Yeah, that's very cartoony. I like that. Yeah, I yeah. like it too. They literally both brought the same exact thing. Well, that shows that they think alike, I guess. Yeah? Awesome. <laughs> oh, that's true. 
or save mm-hmm. money on the props. If, like it was in one <laughs> shot and then they reset with the next actor. It's like, bring the bread again. <laughs> and that's probably exactly what they did. So Ben answers the door and she says, this isn't happening. Please tell me this isn't happening. She tells him he ruined her entire day. By ordering tea, he asks. Uh, Donovan mentions Ben's friend Frank, but this is all a, mi- a misunderstanding. All right, next day, what happens there? Do they? She does storm off. There's no dinner, I guess. She storms off. Becky chases her, yelling at Kevin. Okay. And Ben and Ben and Kevin are like, "What the heck happened here?" Sorry, bread. <laughs> and they have a lot of bread to eat. Women, eh? <laughs> Women, eh? Yeah. Don't you get that a lot? Like the writer was often like looking at the audience and being like, yeah, you, you know what I'm saying, guys? <laughs> yeah. um, it, it's like casually uh, misogynistic. Don't you think, Tom? It is, yeah. Because the, the, no one's really likable, but the guys are a lot more likable than the, the women. The women are flying much. off the handle all the time um, the, yeah. in a way that's not believable. Next yeah. day, Donovan apologizes at the coffee shop after learning that Ben does not, in fact, work with John Lovitz. Um, she has cooking ingredients all over her face at this point. Oh, no, she didn't realize. Oh, how about the way that the, the cooking ingredients are on her face? Very believable, right, Charlie? Uh, so oh art, so artfully placed. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it's like Halloween costume if you were going as a worker or something you would you would do a little dab here a little dab there an enormous dab on her forehead like it <laughs> she's yeah, like, like what has she been working the... with i think she's she's maybe working on the grinder and possibly those are coffee grounds yeah, I, think, I think that's I think what it is no i think it's like grease it's like or is oil. it grease she's working on a machine of some sort <laughs> it's ridiculous I thought, it was, I thought it was supposed to be coffee grounds it's awful it oils from the coffee it could have been either but it, either yes. way it's, it's it's cartoony and it's in line with the with the whole movie donovan yeah. want uh in another ridiculous business decision she she offers ben free tea for life and it's like i have no sympathy for this woman based on her dumb decisions <laughs> um, he wants to try the coffee though, which makes her pretty much. I think that's the moment she falls in love with him, right? When he makes the switch over from tea to coffee. Why does she even offer tea if she's like openly hostile to anyone who would dare do it? <laughs> yeah. Well, especially since I mean, let's. She also gives. That's what she gives. Um, the Lovitz? John Lovitz character. Yeah. She, she gives him a chai, which is a tea. So oh. like, the whole thing is so bizarre because it's for how her could she enemies. Be so anti tea. Her, her brain is not quite right. No, it's, she's like they literally wrote her like a lunatic. Yeah, yeah, it's insulting, frankly. Um, be, the 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 bad writing. Um, all right. So uh, we learned that she was nineteen when she opened the place. Isn't uh, isn't she amazing, Charlie Donovan? Uh it it yeah you get to they do a lot of this in the movie where you hear two people giving the audience information by talking to each other about the other thing that you're seeing and happening. it's always about how great the other it's thing usually is. about Don, yeah i just wrote down hagography and donovan is a saint <laughs> in fact i could you guys was she, was she yeah she was only 19 so she was able to get like an amazing loan, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, to buy this whole building, <laughs> but um, yeah. I kind it, of ass- I thought it was maybe she had inherited the money from when her mom died. Possibly. That's. I think that's what in, in my head. That was the only way it would make sense to me. Yeah, it's and like possible. the only way, like, why would a nineteen-year-old open a coffee shop or have any ability to, to do that? Like have yeah. a business, like be running a business. And like, like, I think that's one of the problems too, is like, it doesn't fit like today, like modern culture, like most 19 year olds aren't, aren't starting their own yeah. business. It's like I it was mean, written, unless, you know, like, unless it's some crazy app or something. Right. But like, yeah, you know, it's just, it just feels like, it was I'm written not in 1950. That it happens, but it, it doesn't feel authentic. Yeah, it, it was written in the days when playwrights <laughs> reigned. <Right. laughs> they reigned supreme. You know, the playwrights yeah, reigned supreme. Yeah, when did this movie release? In like 2015. <laughs> yes. Like it, that's this is just, like this is what's so fascinating. 
fascinating about the movie because it's like it has this very strange nostalgic feel. Yeah, but it's taking place now. Yeah, what a it's great movie. It's taking place now and and like the aesthetics of the movie are very modern. Yeah. Like, yeah. Even, you know, like all the, 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 the lighting, like the everything is very modern. So yeah. like you can't it's not even like you think like you can be transported like like Gilmore Girls, which is like, you know, it takes place in this like idyllic Connecticut town. But, but like mm-hmm. um, I forget the name now. I forget. I, uh, of what? Of Gilmore Girls. Which... Gilmore Girls. But... Stars Hollow. Stars Hollow, right. Nice. So Stars Hollow is like, but Stars Hollow feels like it's out of time. Right. But, but Fairhope does not. Fairhope feels very modern right. in a way. Yeah. It's all to do with the intelligence uh, level of the uh, the writers, writer really. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Gilmore Girls writers are know what they're doing a lot more. You know, it's not even intelligence. It's more experience. I take it back. The, the writer of this movie did a heck of a great job, uh, better than I could ever do. <laughs> Um, we learn, okay, uh, Donovan talks to the old owner of the bank about her, her sorry situation. He laments that he didn't think they'd do that to her. Um, yes. That's the director of the movie. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And my, again, my only advice is do run a better, run a better business, uh, Donovan. (laughs) Um, while Ben plays chess with, um... The wheelchair guy, what's his name? Max? Is he is that the wheelchair guy? I think so, yeah. I think so. Okay. They they each say cities are overrated at the same time. Followed by exactly. Yeah. So yeah, Donovan walks in while Ben's playing chess, and then they both say cities are overrated and then exactly to each other. Which if they didn't fall in love when he ordered the coffee, then boom, mm. it's just happened now. Oh, yeah. but then this this reminds me of the scene in the campus corpse. With, or how they would like tack on like endings of scenes, you know, like with the apple. Remember, um, mm-hmm. when Ben is put in checkmate, and then the scene ends with him retaliating. His next move is to put the other guy in check. No, he's not even in checkmate. First, he's in check, and then boom, he puts the wheelchair guy in checkmate. And it's just like, um, just constantly reminding us that this is written, sort of. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't it hurt so good, Charlie? Yeah, that's exactly it. It's a little a little writerly bit, you know. Yeah. They they they're just they're they're just piling it on in this movie. Uh. They're piling it on, and the, <laughs> the next this scene this fundraiser scene <laughs> is the epitome of piling it on. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. So now Donovan's holding a fundraiser for a village in Ethiopia from which she gets her coffee, and and we get more of that moment those moments where other characters are telling us how great Donovan is and and all that she's done. And just again, piling on Charlie exactly the the. Oh. Let's listen to the oh, play u- ultimate play pile on right here, folks. Together we'll take on this life as the sun melts to pink and blue. So my heart. goes on charlie your thoughts okay well the for the piling on part it was just so donovan is like a hero in the town because she's has a biz a place she runs where locals can gather and then all those other people have jobs because of her but that's not enough and that would be more than enough but her she supports a village they actually yeah. say this. The other guy says <laughs> donovan buys all her beans from her it's how they support their village yeah <laughs> So she, there's this huge thing where you know she uh, has to, I guess, buy beans and also raise money for a, a village in Africa. But it's just, it's so much. We already knew that she did a lot for this town and meant a lot to people. <laughs> but she also, they're bringing this whole other thing of her work, which is involving charity in another con- on another continent. And and, uh, and again, it's like you're you're still raising money for e- Ethiopia when your business is going under. Uh, the Ethiopians will understand, raise money for your own business so that you can continue to sustain their village. And if you alone are sustaining their village, 
How is it that you're not earning enough just to, to pay your mortgage? Oh, okay. good question. Good question. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it, it's amazing. Yeah. But it, again, it, it, it's, it's the cartoony aspect of it, but this is really way, way turned up. So yeah. who, who shows up um, at the end of this uh, party? None other than Patrick, her, her ex. Just as Ben, you know, Ben was starting to really warm up, warm up to Donovan. Then he has to watch the Patrick and uh, Donovan hugging. And uh, it's, oh, it's brutal and, and very difficult to take. Um, Patrick and Donovan enjoy a dinner. They talk about how Becky has found, has a mind of her own, which is a trait she shares with Donovan. Patrick finds it captivating and confounding, which, uh, that, you know, Donovan um, is kind of warming up to him a little bit right there with the line like that. She's, yes. He's like an, an animated mannequin or something. <laughs> He's like a mannequin that somehow came to life, that guy. <laughs> yes. He yeah. is. He is wooden. He is very fake looking and acting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At, at, at the dinner, they discuss that the next next morning, um, she will have um, a triple caramel mocha waiting for him at the shop. And he said, "You remembered." And and um, and she says, "Some things you don't forget." <laughs> <laughs> and by that, she means his drink. Yeah. <laughs> Only no other layers <laughs> Ben and also it's like it seemed like they dated a long time I don't even think it's I mean and she runs a coffee shop it's not that like um shocking that she remembered his drink I you know I don't know yeah right. and it's extra preposterous because preposterous because it's such a ridiculous drink like for a guy a guy like a big businessman type guy <laughs> give me your caramel. give me triple pump caramel <laughs> mocha like it's just so it seems so frivolous <laughs> yeah. for a no-nonsense guy like patrick yeah i don't know uh ben arrives at the shop the next morning uh turns out patrick has canceled his plan to visit in the morning uh he's instead traded up for another dinner that night um, now, why did he have to trade up for dinner that night? Because he's having a high-powered business meeting with John Lovitz. And now let's listen to a little bit of that. Frank Miller, nice to finally meet you, you boy. Have a seat. Thanks. You know, I have heard nothing but good things about you. You are really making a reputation for yourself up in Chicago. Okay. <laughs> it's mm, like the, it's like the playwright. It's like the playwright situation where like your reputation yeah. as a businessman in Chicago has made it down to the Gulf Coast, huh, Tom? Oh, it's this is what what reminded me of Birdemic a little bit. That like it's like not it, it's like created by a person who doesn't really understand how society or careers work at all. Like <laughs> remember there's like yeah. the, there's like a aspiring model and like a week into her career, she's like, "Guess what? I got the cover of Victoria's <laughs> Secret." <laughs> yeah, and like it's like that. It's like, you, have you ever actually talked to another human being before? Like, <laughs> this is not how life works. No. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Amen. Let's hear some more of this meeting. Appreciate you meeting on such short notice, Frank. Well, I was just thrilled to get your call, and I am very intrigued about your plan to help Miss Turner. My guys should be able to work quickly on this one. If we can come to an agreement, can you meet with Donovan and me on Thursday? Thursday. No, I'm leaving for London tomorrow night. Then we need to make this deal happen today. Works for me. <laughs> I love that I got John Lovitz for this. It's uh, <laughs> really good stuff. Wow. Wow. Um, this, yeah, Ava. This whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> I, like, <coughs> it's such a movie thing to, to have something like this happen where the... Um, like the one of the characters doesn't actually communicate what's going on with the character that it affects most. Yeah. So, like, wh- why doesn't he talk to Donovan and explain his plan beforehand? Yeah. Why must it be a surprise? Like, like either he knows that it's not going to work for him. Or work for her, or or like like none of it, because it, like it just doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, Charlie, what is going on? Did he know about her problems, uh, her financial problems, before he came back to the town? Did his message "I have to see you" 
just just mean I want to see you again. And then he came to town, and then off camera, he learned about her problems. Yeah, I think that's a good question. <laughs> well, you know, it kind of has to be because he wouldn't learn about um, you know the problems of of a private problems of, of a small coffee shop in no, Chicago. No, no, from who knows? The Gulf Coast. Who knows if Lovitz is hearing about his reputation in Chicago? I mean, in this reality. Just yeah. everyone nationwide knows what's going on with everyone else. I'm just saying. Well, maybe. that's like, yeah, the, the small town banker. He's like, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I gotta sell my bank. Like, ah, oh, the Chicago guy is like, oh man, there's a great opportunity in this town of 800 <laughs> people. We gotta get on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. God. It makes no sense. All right. And and what also makes no sense though is that Patrick, like he, like we said, he, they've obviously been together for a long time. Like he obviously knows how important this coffee shop is. Right. I know. None of it makes any sense. He's like, I know. Yeah. I know what I'll do. I'll just secretly, um, um, ruin end the thing that she's been trying so hard to, you know, put the ending. She's been trying to put off. Let me expedite that for her. (laughs) Let's demolish the building that you love. You go for that, right? (laughs) You, you confounding, uh, woman. (laughs) All right. The business meeting runs late. Uh, Donovan has to wait downtown for the dinner. She bumps into Ben. He's on his way to get some gelato at Lucy's. She agrees to go with them. You'll have to order for me. I'm oh, oh God, this line. Listen to what he says to her. Go, uh, You'll have to order for me. I'm not sure they'll see me standing next to you. Referring mm-hmm. to how beautiful she is. Oh, Ava, would you just yeah. roll yeah, your eyes that- if- Oh my God! So corny. It's you know the thing. The problem. The other problem I have with this movie is like what whatever flip switches for Ben, where he suddenly decides that he wants <laughs> to be with Donovan. Like it's it happens so like falsely. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like he saw her at the fundraiser, heard her sing, and then like decided like this is she's the one I want, and then that's when Patrick shows up. So like. Immediately, there's this false, like, comp, like, you know, obstacle. Yeah. And this, like this whole, like, false. It just, it, false is the it, key word of of every scene in this movie, really. Yeah. Just nothing yeah. rings true. <laughs> All right. Um, Sarah and um, Eli. Eli is the barista war guy, right? Yeah, yeah. They're like the they're like. <laughs> The, the best friends type characters that you see in many of these type romantic comedy. They're walking around town at the time and they note, um, they see them walking around and, and note that. And also they mention uh, Donovan's got money problems. Um, now Donovan and Ben sitting in the gloaming. Is it the gloaming there, Tom? <laughs> I think it's the gloaming. Okay, so they're in the gloaming <laughs> discussing how she once ran away to a lighthouse as a child. Um, they watch uh, a small town oh, tradition. Oh, <laughs> so good. You know, small town tradition where the couples dance in the sand amidst the tiki torches, you know? Like every yeah. night. Is, it, is yeah. it every night or is this every weekend or I, is this one day per year? I, I hope know. it's one day per year. <laughs> good timing. <laughs> That's the only thing that makes any sense. No, it's like, yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, and yes. That much Oh, that I, much foot traffic. Those many couple. That many couples. <laughs> yeah, like I the know. Whole town. The whole, whole town. town, dancing. I see it now. You know why this town means so much to you. Ben says, "The world doesn't care about the ide- idealistic notions of a small town coffee girl." Donovan laments later in the conversation. Um, they they end up dancing, um, but the dance ends when she gets a call from Patrick. He's ready for dinner. <clears throat> so, well, they almost kiss. Oh yeah. Oh, they almost mm-hmm. kiss out on on the sand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. But don't you get when she says that thing about no one cares about the small town coffee girl? Like, you get. I feel like a little sense that she knew she wasn't telling the truth. Like she thinks she's like pretty <laughs> awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Again, because everything rings false. Everything rings false. It's like, oh, Donovan, knock it off. You think you're the best. <laughs> and I, we haven't talked about this yet, but this this actress playing Donovan is acting hard. 
Oh, she's yeah. acting hard. Oh, I've yeah. never yeah. seen so many half eye bats in in my life. <laughs> it was it was wearying. She's <laughs> she's doing I know she's doing her best. I guess maybe that's her thing. Can I say it's coquettish? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. That's allowed. Yes. But she is acting hard, and it yeah. is so many little eye flutters and looks and things. Oh, and, and tone. She's whispering. And like, like t- Tom was like, he's like, why is she always whispering yeah. while we were watching the movie? Yeah, yeah. So. There's so, a lot of in the the way that she speaks. You know, there's a lot. There's like, like understated sassiness, sassiness at times too, especially in the voiceover. Um, yeah, it's something else. Something else. All right, presumably after dinner and a show. Okay, yeah, what was that? Did he hear her? She's like, uh, how did you get tickets? Remember that when they're walking home? Yeah, that was weird too because, like, they are clearly having a very late dinner. Yes. And, like, how would this, like, it's it's just, like, so, it's so nitpicky, right? But, like, at the same time, you're watching this and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, a, this is a small town. So, like, if you've ever lived in a small town on like coastal America, you know that the town shuts down at ten. Right. Yeah. And, and, and she says it's been sold Eric out, King. sold out for weeks. She says. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they didn't show them at a show. It's. I was like, wait, is he talking about how he got tickets to a show in Chicago? And that's just the conversation. But it it's, seems like they're referring to what they just did. But. But uh, that left me with a lot of questions. Charlie, did you pick up on that? Not so well as you guys <laughs> okay. did. That, that's that, what a what a annoying thing to throw in there. Yeah. Just having the dinner would have been plenty. The dinner was plenty. The dinner was exactly. plenty. The show brought so many questions, and it's just like <laughs> I had to pause it and just be like, "Wait, what are the what are the ramifications of this little statement?" Oh my goodness! So they um they they get. Like what? It's been showing every night for 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 weeks. I just need to dwell on this some more. The every... entire town would need to go see it every yes! night. Yes. How could it possibly be selling out every night? It, and... Dinner is king in this world. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, they kiss outside of her house, um, with Becky in the window giving fist pumps. She's so she's so happy that they're kissing. Oh, Becky. Becky, Becky, Becky. All right. The sisters inside the house, the sisters discuss the situation. We learn that Patrick told Donovan that he'd tell her tomorrow about his meeting with John Lovitz. Oh, what a power move, huh? Like you just spent the whole night with her. Oh, yes. And also, I did something really important for you, but I won't tell you. It's like, oh, Patrick. Oh, you make me really mad. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, ben comes to the shop the next morning and is sad to hear that her dinner went well. He's brought her a mug with a lighthouse on it. You're the only one here who doesn't have a mug of your own, he says. Mm-hmm. Yes, Tom. Was was that established at some point that everyone has their own mug? <laughs> no, and he's a, he hasn't been there that that much to know that, you know? He's been in yeah. town, what, three days at this point, I think? Yeah, it's like I'm new to I'm new to this town. Let's discuss mugs. <laughs> Eli, which one do you use every day? All right, Sarah, Kevin, come on in here. Mugs. <laughs> I don't. I don't really know what. I don't really know what I do and don't have anymore. She replies. Ooh, that's uh, heavy. Uh, mm. That is real heavy. Sick. Yeah, he's like, uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought you'd like this, this you mug. Do you have a mug? <laughs> you got a lighthouse mug. <laughs> like, that's the other thing is, like, she's bizarrely cryptic about some things. And then, like, like other thing, things she has no problems being, like, ridiculously open about. It, it just doesn't make any, like, she's yeah. so. Inconsistent. Yeah. Yes, that's the word I was looking yeah. for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the whole movie is so inconsistent. Oh, I'm, I'm still mad about the show that they seem to have gone <laughs> on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so angry. All right. Now it's the big meeting with Patrick and John Lovitz and Donovan um, with Ben watching from another table. It's happening right there at the coffee shop. Um, turns out Patrick has brokered a sale of the building which will include a very handsome profit. Your boyfriend really lives up to his real estate guru reputation, John, <laughs> John Lovett says. 
Uh, the buyer is going to turn it into a parking garage. Donovan's not happy. Ben continues to look on. He's pumped um, that, that it's not working well. He goes to check on her. Um, and he follows her all the way to a bench overlooking the water again. And um, she poetically discusses how much she hates parking garages. Um, that coffee shop that coffee shop has a way of changing people, Ben says. It changed me. And like I just said, uh, what, this yeah. is day four. This is his fourth day. Fourth yeah. day yeah. in time. I, I have to say, though, like the 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 fact that, that this. First of all, if he's being the realtor for his client, he's screwing his client over by giving Donovan an actual profit, because if this is a foreclosure, the bank is just trying to settle to cover the amount of money that is still owed to them. Mm -hmm. So like the whole thing business wise makes no sense at all. Yeah. At all. Yeah. <laughs> because like he can't be looking out for Donovan's interests. Not really. If or, like, if he's good at what he does. Right. Cause she has no leverage. Okay. Yeah. How, yeah. And how about this? Um, how about from Donna? Like, look at look at Donovan. She's just like pouting. Essentially, she's pouting and saying, "No, I don't want a parking garage here." It's like yeah. Donovan, as we've established, you have no leverage, and what you're just gonna just keep keep showing up to work every day until like the bulldozers are there. Basically, is is her approach. And what bugs me is it it ends up working. You know, like her approach to just ignore. Yeah. All these real world problems ends up being saved thanks to well, thanks to playwriting. Uh, also in a foreclosure, I, I don't think as the owner you you actually don't have any say, right? Because like the bank is the owner. When you when you're foreclosed on, the bank has said you haven't made any payments. Right. But this whole situation is bizarre because, like, they're allegedly foreclosing on it, but actually, what they've done is they've increased her mortgage rate to like something ridiculous, like twenty four point nine percent, which I think was what it said on the piece of paper that briefly flashed. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so, so like, clearly, she can't pay for this mortgage. So it's like in anticipation of her not being able to pay. Yeah. Like so, so all of this is it's. It, it just doesn't make any it's sense. Fiscally unsound. It's, it's all, you know, it's not how the real world yeah. works. And like, I know it's a silly, like, again, it's nitpicking all with like, oh, well, it's a movie. It's not real. Except like, they're trying to ground it with these real things. And like, you know, like when they tug on your heartstrings about like the so Ethiopian, mm -hmm. like coffee growers. And so like, you can't, you can't have play it both ways. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's right. They that's know good... they know as little ab about mor mortgages and foreclosures as they do about playwriting. I think is ultimately what it comes down to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Before Ben leaves her to do some more deep thinking on the on the bench, he mentions that God really does work in mysterious ways, which is oh, a nice so little true. touch. It's so true. All right, Kevin and Becca ride up to Donovan's to check on her. I've never seen her pedal that fast Kevin says and and then Becca pushes Kevin over so uh -huh. they yeah remember that scene so they rode their bikes over to, to check on Donovan and then um, and Kevin made that little uh, joke and then she actually pushes the poor guy over that's mean huh Charlie yes that 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 was a very uh, par for the course for this movie like some little cutesy they thought it was like a little cutesy thing you know yeah yeah awful all right becky tries to convince donovan to go for patrick he loves you she says you'll be losing the coffee shop either way um she meets patrick for a dinner telling him she's not taking the deal she's accepting foreclosure as long as lovitz finds a buyer who'll use the building prop properly which ava would argue um is not a demand that she can make right ava no, not not really. Yeah. I mean, what a not brat! Following yeah. actual banking rules. She's a total brat. <laughs> yes. You, you did you uh, guys like the line here? I, I think uh, Patrick says it's you're just talking a... go, but yeah, yeah. Are you gonna play it, Farley? No, or no, 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 no. You go. He he says after Donovan says like she's not taking the accepting the deal. 
Patrick says, you're talking about more than just a coffee shop, aren't you? Meaning like <laughs> themselves. Oh. And it, that moment was so sappy. It was amazing, oh. especially coming from that actor. Yeah. Patrick guy, yeah. yeah. I'm going to say something controversial real quick. Yeah. The, the two leads have a little bit of chemistry. All right. Well, hey. You've, you've said it it's there and we'll we'll just let it we'll let it simmer it's definitely for more while. chemistry than donovan and patrick who like yeah. when they have that kiss in front of her house it was like the most excruciating like oh my god these two characters two actors could have couldn't have less chemistry yeah. if they tried and, yeah. and that's and why i wrote it down because after on the heels of that those two together i was like okay these two at least feel and also mm-hmm. Becky and, and Kevin, they're so awful, the two of them together, you know? So, uh, I mean, it's really just um, by com- comparatively speaking, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right, Ben gets a call from his producer, the new play, <laughs> which he's written really quickly, it turns <laughs> out, you know? But new play is going to be a hit, so that's big. Staff meeting at the coffee shop, Donovan tells him she did her best, but she couldn't keep it open. Ben shows up to take her on their first date. Um, again, Donovan just ignoring all her real world problems. Like Ben just shows up and she's like, oh, okay, I guess we're going on a date. Um, Sarah and Eli say they'll watch the shop. And just like that, they're off. And then Sarah and Eli start plotting something. Something's, something's um, happening. Ben blindfolds her and leads her to a dock where he's rented a sailboat for them, including two cups of coffee. So romantic, huh, Tom? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like she, what? It's like, what can I do? Uh, maybe get her a cup of coffee. Like she definitely <laughs> likes that. <laughs> it's it's so lame. I mean, I guess she likes. She must like coffee, but <laughs> so she it's something. She comes home uh, happy from the date. Happy for really the first time in a while. But it doesn't last. Becky, oh uh, Becky, is livid because she's read some notes from Ben's new play. And it talks about how Donovan, um, it makes fun of Donovan and the whole town. He's been laughing at you and using you this entire time, she declares. Oh, you all want it, Charlie. Yeah, there's one line where she says, this play, it's all about you and this odd town. Yes. It's it's really not that odd of a town. (laughs) Let's listen. Let's listen to some good stuff here. Yeah, I knew my plan would work. Can you explain this? Explain what? You're serious. She actually studies for her dates. Donovan's a chronic overtrier. She has no idea people see her as totally desperate. Queen of Mayberry? I can't explain that. Really? How can you explain that? It's not what you think. Oh, that's right, because you're a writer, huh? Unexpected is your thing. Plot twists are your specialty. Well, congratulations. I never expected that you were a jerk or a liar. Would you just calm down? Donovan, if you just give me a minute, I What, feed me more lies? Get more material for your play? You know, why don't I, I just burst into tears? That'll be a great scene. People could tap dance to my agony, right? Hold on. I think by now I should have at least earned the chance. Earned the chance? Really, you earn nothing when you used my life for a, a punchline. You're a fraud. Donovan, wait. You know, I thought you were genuine, but it's all just for your own gain. Go back to New York, Ben, okay? You don't belong here. How's that for a plot twist? Oh, God. Not very good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> oh, that. Uh, nice. So this this whole argument is like the one thing that made Becky like to, like it killed the character of Becky for me. Yeah, I mean she was close to dead, she's, but yeah, she's the worst. She's the worst, and like no one gives poor Ben a chance to speak <laughs> at all, and I'm like. Did you actually read the whole thing or did you just read like until you where you got mad? Like I mm. it's like again. Yeah. And Becky loves it. Oh, Becky has nothing going on. She's just selling a couple of items on eBay here and there and just sitting there thinking, How can I make 
how can I inject drama into 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 my life? And and she found those notes and she was so happy. Oh, mm. I hate Becky. Well, and the other thing is, I don't understand her like weird antagonism against Ben, like who by all accounts like he's allegedly this Tony winning playwright. <laughs> so he's a successful guy. And why is this small, like small town investment banker who moved to Chicago, such a much better thing <laughs> and like better person when he clearly doesn't understand who Donovan is as a person, right. yeah. um, a better guy for her than Ben is. Uh, what's also fun about this is that it's so uh, ham-fisted, I think is Charlie's way of describing it. The 14, <laughs> 14 minutes left in the movie, they're like, oh, we need something else. Let's just jam this in here where there's this sudden like uh, difficulty with Ben. Like, just so unnecessary, just unnecessary and very quickly resolved. Uh, and ridiculous, but I did. I did like her speech. Yeah, you know, and like, how's that for a plot twist? Like, wh- what? What are you talking about? What? Do you, what do you mean? Going is go is me telling you to go back to New York a plot twist? I don't know. I don't. Anyway, she's the one that set up that he likes plot twists. He's like, she has no proof he even likes plot twists. <laughs> right. The other the other thing that I really actually loved about this scene, right, is that she says like, why don't I cry? Right, yeah. wait, and I break down into tears. Yeah, and then they have the next scene is her and Becky driving to some random <laughs> plot of land in the town, and then she gets out of the car, and then the actress really tries to cry, <laughs> but she can't. Like, like yeah. it, it, and and it goes on for like maybe 30 seconds, which like, okay, that doesn't sound like a long time, except when you're watching it on oh, film, yeah. it is a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So yeah. yeah like, I remember that. Like Ava says, Becky uh, drives back to the coffee shop and, uh, um, Donovan has her moment. And, but then she sees Max, um, who's carrying a Bible in the wheelchair. He says, you look more like your mama every day. I could really use some. I could really use her strength right now, she says, and he provides some uh, reassuring words of wisdom, plus a paper her mom had given him after <laughs> his accident. Uh, Donovan reads it and is inspired. So that was beautiful, huh, Charlie? Yeah, it's like here's this paper I keep with me all the day. It's like that. It's very, it's very convenient. Donovan walks into. Oh, her- maybe that's why. This is why you thought it was like. Religious. Is oh, because yeah. Isn't Donovan's mom, she was always quoting Bible scripture. And so this one quote, uh, it is uh, it is from like Philistines mm. or something. Or yeah. Philistines, it, whatever. Definitely. It's, it's definitely, I don't know. I didn't, it, no question in my mind. It, it was, uh, it seems like a church group somehow gathered enough money to, that they could hire, uh, you know, some uh, relatively well-known actors and make, make the movie they always wanted to make. And I'm so glad they did. Oh, Donovan walks into her shop and receives an ovation from the crowd. They're celebrating her. Let's listen to some of the some of the testimonials at this really great little gathering, which it's really just the it seems identical to the Ethiopia gathering, really, except yep. Uh, yep. we're just celebrating Donovan. Celebrating what? You. You've been here ten years serving us all and giving up so much to do at Donovan. You thought you may be wondering if it's all worth it. We'll let you decide. I remember my first day working here. I was a complete disaster. Dangerous, really. But you were eerily calm. Anyone else would have thrown me out on my ear, especially after the whole fire incident. The first time I ever met Becky, she was sitting right there. And, uh, he stared at me for days. It was a little creepy. Okay, like, why? Why is the history of Becky and Kevin, uh, you know, front and center in this thing? I guess it's because they met at the coffee shop. I guess yeah, that's, that's the case. all the good things that happen at the coffee uh, shop. It's pretty amazing. And uh, she's uh, been so we're running gonna... a business, Charlie. Like it's not a charity. They talk about it like it's a charity, Charlie. You know. That's true. They do. So you're are you gonna get to Donovan performing again at at, at a tribute to herself? <laughs> she she doesn't feel the a little home. She's like, okay, this is enough. 
It's all the testimonials to me are enough. They're like, all right, spotlight, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm going over the piano. I want to sell hard some emotions. I'm going to gla- glance at everyone with like gentle eyes and everything. <laughs> I thought that was pretty amazing. I mean, performing at the fundraiser was one thing, but performing at a tribute to herself. <laughs> it's bold. That wasn't planned. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm gonna play the song. Um, but oh, d- when she is performing, we we get clips of great moments that happen. Oh, at the medley, coffee. yeah, like, medley, like the end of Annie Hall, which is really nice, including one from Max, who is so grateful for telling him he belonged there. So that's beautiful. But um, Ben Ben's about to show up, folks. Let's hear this. <laughs> Hold on. <clears throat> I have one more. Haven't you done enough? <laughs> Not nearly. Shut up, Becky. Hi, I'm Ben. Most of you probably don't know me. I don't have a list of life-altering moments that happen here like most of you. But I do have one. I told you. You don't belong here. Yes, I do. You wrote a play making fun of us, of me, actually. I read it with my own eyes, Ben. You called me desperate. But you didn't read this part. In those pages you found, you stumbled into the middle of a story when things are muddy and confusing. I didn't know how to write the end of the story until today. You, you said I was a fraud, and you were right. I wasn't with you, but I have been in my work. I used to speak from my soul. And then I began trying to write hits, write things I thought other people wanted to hear. And you thought you had to do the same thing to find love, didn't you? Be- Ooh, touche, huh? He knows her. He knows <laughs> not, her. Not the best time to bring that up. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Um, so there's so much going on there, but, um, wow. He goes on to say that the play is about falling in love with her. You love me? She asks. Every stubborn, beautiful, frustrating, inspiring bit of you, he says before kissing her and the crowd goes wild. (laughs) Even Becky. Oh, everyone's kind of grudgingly, but she does. She's like, yeah, all right, fine. Okay. He says he won't let her lose that coffee shop. Um, so Ben to the rescue, uh, which is, which annoys me. It's like uh, we've established uh, her, I mean, you know, as like self-sufficient and doing things on her own, but she needs to be saved by this this idiot um, playwright, which bugs me. But um, yeah, my perhaps my favorite part um, of the movie is now they go to New York for the for rehearsals of his. Uh, of- oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's listen. I'm not going to let you lose this coffee shop. And he was true to his word. He actually had a solution. A new hit Broadway play. From the very first moment I met Donna, I knew she was like no one I'd ever known before. She was absolutely... Irritating and desperate? I wasn't going to say that. But you did say it. Let's see how he digs himself out of this one. Yes, I did say that. Maybe I even believed it until I got to know her. And then I realized we were actually just alike. Both searching, trying to be the best of themselves. Good on their own. But incredible. Together. together. It's a hit. You did it, kid. You did it. Oh. Oh. I see more Tonys. I'm not. Wait, where, where are you going? Have fun. You know where to find us. We open tonight. The critics said it was Ben's best work, full of authenticity and hard surprises. Oh my God. They opened that night. It looks like they were just barely starting the rehearsals <laughs> of the most simplistic. Broadway play ever to be staged in the history of Broadway. I mean, 
it does not look like a Broadway play at all. It's off, off, off Broadway, if anything. So far, uh, it's it's at the, the 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 place where the show that had been sold out for weeks was was playing. You know, they couldn't they couldn't book that that room in the small town. <laughs> oh, how could anyone listen to that? Th- those two actors and think we are going to win a Tony. It's, it's a hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so oh, bad. It hurts. Oh, he, <laughs> so his advance check was enough to pay for the coffee shop. She wanted to pay him back, but he had a different idea. Full partnership. Now they're planning a double wedding. Eli <clears throat> wants a barista war with Donovan. Sarah serves a customer saying good morning and he says it is now. <laughs> <laughs> That's ham fisted. Oh man, <laughs> he, she should have ended up with Eli. She and Eli were perfect for each other, and like, like now she's just falling for this idiot. The, yeah, it, that the, was bad chemistry with that idiot. It, it is now is the is the same as that line Ben has when he's like, "I'm not sure they'll see me at the gelato place because of you." You know, it's like, oh. Yeah. It's one of those like <laughs> cheesy lines that no ne- have, has never worked on a woman. I'm oh. telling you, writer, like they never actually <laughs> met another human being. <laughs> and then uh, they definitely never interacted with women. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it's in the coffee, is what Donovan says at the end of the movie, referring to how there's something in the air um, with love. And then, oh, what a decision! She looks directly into the camera to say it's in the coffee, I believe. And then oh, yes. and then she looks back and winks right at us. Oh, yes. my goodness. It's just like, why not? At this point, the director's like, I don't know. Why not? Just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can get away with it there. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. So, um, and there you yeah. have it, coffee shop. Um, I really, oh, I had some... Good times with this one, Charlie. As the credits roll, a song called Low Fat Latte plays. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, that's like the knife. Here's the dagger. Hard yeah. twist. <laughs> the pain of that. It's, it's this most phoned-in pop song with terrible rhymes about coffee and stuff. And that just plays over the credits. Here, I'll, right play, I'll play you a little. Decaf, come on, don't make me laugh. Gotta have the real thing on strong. They like the mocha down in Boca. Oh. oh. <laughs> they like the mocha down in Boca. Oh, I don't even know oh. if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine being a high-profile DJ and slipping that into a set somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so, uh, Tom, you tell us your thoughts on Coffee Shop. Uh, I mean, it, it's more fun to talk about than to watch, I think. Yeah. I'm glad, you know, we watched it together. Like I said, I, I mean, overall, I, I feel like it, it was created by people who don't haven't watched a lot of TV or film or read anything, you know, in their lives, really with any complexity. Yeah. And I feel like they're going for like, I think it was, it's it's almost like they were going for like a, a TV series, you know, that this was going to be like, a pilot. Yeah. you know, like, oh, this is the play. It's like Cheers, you know, like if this was a show off on for 10 years. Like they're going for like that like level of impact of how we would care about these people, you right? Know? But they haven't earned it. They didn't do anything wow. to earn that level of 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 interest, but uh, for those well, characters, I, I feel like you actually said like this feels like a series finale yeah. episode of some <laughs> show. Yeah, yeah. That's what it felt like. Maybe. Yeah, but- especially that whole like last scene when everyone was talking about Donovan. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yep. Hurt right. so hurt so that yeah um and I, well what's what's amazing is that um that g- it got made though you know like usually someone a misguided uh attempt you know so a script that that that's that confused isn't gonna be funded enough to look I mean it looks so good you know it sounds good and um they're all relatively competent actors so. Uh, it just, um, I don't know, maybe on Lifetime shows, there's tons of movies like this. Uh, I, I was going to say, so like I'm probably the target audience for this kind of movie. Yeah. Because um, I do enjoy watching like ABC Family movies. Yeah. I, I will admit that I have watched 
the 12 Days of Christmas nice. movie with Amy Smart and Mark Paul Gossler. Oh, yeah. More than one. Nice. So is this <laughs> is this on par with that, or is it a notch it, below? I really enjoy that one. Right. I, I did not enjoy this one so, so much. I mean, that one definitely has even more of a made-for-TV feel, but this one also has that made-for-TV. I, I don't exactly know the production history on this one, but I think it was also made-for-TV. Um, so um, it just, like, I, I don't... And some of these movies are are often like this, where they just, you know, like, they sort of take place in, in our reality, but have this kind of weird sense of, like, timelessness that is really strange, because, like, there's this, like, kind of, if you actually tried to put these characters in the real world, they wouldn't work at all. And like the situations that they're encountering don't work at all. Mm. And I think for me, the bigger problem with this movie was just um, the pacing and the stakes in this one aren't very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, um, and the way that they try to build up like this coffee shop issue, like they, they, they try too many different things to, to ever actually make it something cohesive. And then actually having, both her ex-boyfriend and Ben around and her spending more time with her ex-boyfriend than the lead guy in the movie is like, especially since she has zero chemistry with the ex-boyfriend and all this chemistry with Ben or like whatever, minimal amounts of chemistry with Ben. um, Like, it's like they made all these very strange decisions that, that really sort of like, I'm like, I don't know how to to express it, but it's like, it's like, it doesn't work. (laughs) Yeah. There's no center. What about you? What about you, Charlie? You, you've, um, you've dipped your toe in, in these kind of movies before. Is, is it special or is it just that I've never seen anything, uh, any of them? I think there are a lot like this and they're all over the place. This one is like, it's like a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. Yeah. If like the original is like, shop around the corner or some billy wilder movie with a good good mix-ups and stuff then you got like eh, the next level where yeah. there's like okay they're copying that and they're hiding their feelings and then, and then there's like eh, there's like this one in this fake world which is really forced and there's more ham-fisted things and they they knew what they were supposed to be doing but they're a couple levels removed from mm. like the greats um yeah. but that being said um it's still kind of fun. Sort of the pleasure of watching it is feeling them try to make that movie yeah. that they want to make. So, yeah. and and it's not really boring. I mean, there's always something wacky going on. That's that's. I mean, it's not the right word. There's always something going on that makes you think. Like, yeah. what are they getting at here? And in what ways are they failing? How can I reconcile <laughs> that? Um, but you know, it's. It's it's a really mixed bag. It's weird. It's hard to say that I like it, but I'm also not gonna say I don't like it. And um, you, you know, there's there's a lot of levels. That's why I think Farley asked us to watch it so he, we we could sort of all talk about it. Yeah, I just when I watched it, I was just like, oh my god, this is uh, <clears throat> it's like, I, this same group of people <clears throat> could have made uh could have made a horror movie, you know, that mm-hmm. in 1984, true. True. you know, it just seemed it was. It's I mean, and, if and you think about beautiful. it, most like there's a very fine line between like romance novels and horror. Yeah, novel, you know, like one just has all the kissing and the other one just has all the killing. Yeah, like, but they're yeah. really talking about two different sets of double. But letters. they're both just a, <laughs> a genre genre thing. Yeah. So yeah, Charlie. one one quick genre point, very quick. Donovan is to this kind of movie, at least that actress, a romantic comedy as. In a little way, this is controversial, but Ricky, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, to horror. Because yeah. Ricky acting so hard, he's obviously way more of our favorite and stuff, but yeah. eyebrow moves galore, mm-hmm. over the top like crazy. Donovan, as a romantic comedy girl, is mm-hmm. so breathy, so many looks. Yeah. It is yeah. just Times 10, up to 11. To the yeah. max, yeah. 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 Good point, yeah. She, she did play TV's... Smallville's Supergirl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a just what an amazing thing because the cast is um is impressive, frankly. You know, um, yeah. 
it really feels like in a small town in Alabama, they they just pulled together their money to make it. I, I'd like to know the history. Uh, what what when? It, how did this? How did this come come to be? Yeah. Um, but uh, I I think it's super enjoyable uh, in in all those ways. So, you know, I'm glad I'm glad you watched it. Definitely, it's yeah. definitely fun to talk about. Um, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change the podcast completely. But if we were ever to do this again, there's a movie called Murder on the Cape currently on um, Netflix, and um, really good, really mm. good, ladies and gentlemen, Murder on the Cape. Check it out. So- thriller type it's a like, thriller uh, yeah, sleep, yeah sleeping with the enemy mold uh yeah a little bit but like oh my goodness ladies and gentlemen wow in fact i almost called you guys a few days ago to say forget about coffee shop <laughs> we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're doing murder on the cape but i thought let's just let it be so ladies and gentlemen thank you for indulging me um in in coffee shop but um really what 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 we love about, uh, at least what I love about the the bad horror movies, um, I saw it all over this movie, and it was uh, it was a gosh darn delight to sit there and just uh, enjoy the uh, enjoy nitpicking. Ava, you said nitpicking, but it's like nitpicking is fun in movies like this because oh yeah, I, yeah. I, I enjoy doing it. This is why I, I have joined the podcast. <laughs> Yes, yeah. and yes. Yeah. So we'll be back to pick the nits off of uh, a 1980s horror movie next month. Thanks for Ava, Tom, and Charlie. This is Farthest saying good night. <laughs>